Cool. Um, yeah, so like uh, Eric mentioned, I'm going to be talking a little bit about brunch and how it solves a lot of kind of common problems that people face with that uh, background. So who's here heard of, who's heard of brunch? Anybody? One, two, ish. Okay, I was going to ask who's used brunch, but we're <laughs> approaching nothing. So anyway, so some common problems with backbone, um, especially building large, complex single-page apps. So, like you have to write lots of boilerplate code. There's lots of things which need to be like wired together before it all starts working. And when you first start out, you're just like, I need to do stuff. I don't know what I need to do. And anyways, yeah, so you take a while to figure out how to like put it all together to make it work. And I mean, maybe you get it working, but you actually did it in a really sucky way. So that caused lots of problems down the road. Um, it's not opinionated, which again makes it really hard to get started. Like, it's just a backbone to use their metaphor. And to build an app, there's lots of other things that you need to make things happen. And backbone doesn't really help you with that. Um, and so yeah, it's not even really a framework. It's just like these like helper mm -hmm. things that you need that everyone needs, and they're done really well, but you need a lot more. Um, but backbone's great. Underscore, you know, it's great. Um, but you need help getting the rest of the way. Okay. So I, I found this quote today. I uh, really like it. Says the rails for JavaScript apps is yet to arrive uh, in brunch to kind of kill any thoughts. It's not the rails for JavaScript apps, but it's kind of approaching that direction. Um, and it kind of provides a lot of things that you might be used to building server-side apps. Um, so kind of complete the analogy like brunch <laughs> provides the rest of the body as you're building your HTML5 superhero. Um, so this is kind of the, the tagline that Brunch uses. It's a lightweight approach to build an HTML5 application with emphasis on elegance and simplicity. And you kind of think it as an application assembler where you can throw all your stuff in the Brunch app directory and it'll <coughs> compile all that into a single JavaScript file and single CSS file, minify it, and deploy it. So it's kind of a, a, a toolkit for you know, getting started with your app and compiling and building it um, and putting it in production. Um, it uses, it's built in Node.js and uses plugins which you know, speak to all these different uh, types of things. You can use JavaScript or Roy or CoffeeScript or whatever. You can use different template languages, use different styles, different minifiers. Um, and also testing support is coming in version 1.2, so you have kind of automated, automatic testing support for your app as you build it. Um, so completing that for also Brunch kind of provides like a template or a skeleton to get you started um, building your app, which you'll see in a bit when I do uh, some tests. So yeah, I'll move on to actually showing off Brunch a bit. So here we are at the terminal. So Brunch is command line app. I'm going to make that bigger. Increase. Cool. So um, this is the different commands. Brunch new, you know, create a new project. Brunch build, it does the compile step. Uh, Brunch watch, so it'll watch your directory. And as you're like, changing code, it'll detect that change and compile it. Um, and actually, in another version or two, they're talking about getting like hot code refresh stuff working, so as soon as you make a change, it'll refresh your page uh, with the new code and so forth. Um, Brunch generate, if you're familiar with Rails, you know you can generate new collections or models automatically for you. Um, yeah, so we'll do Brunch new sample app, and we'll let it do its thing. So it creates the directory and then it installs some uh, Node.js packages that it needs. Which, okay. And if you go in the app in, in the directory, um, there's up here, there's the app, which is all the source code for your application. So it has like assets, has a library, directory, models, styles, views. Um, pretty same directory structure. Uh, different node modules. It has a test directory where you can put different stuff there. And then a vendor directory where you drop in different JavaScript libraries or CSS um, libraries that you're using. Um, so, yeah, so let's compile this and see what it looks like out of our build it, I guess. If you do branch build or compile it, you can also do branch watch. If you add an app dash s, it has a built in server for.
serving your stat files. Um, so you just go to pull up and you have our app. Um, I'm just going to click that. Um, so if you want to do like bench generate, you like print generate, collection, post, and then it creates directory, creates file, um, the test files, branch generate, model, post, branch generate, view, post, view, so on and so forth. Um, so as you can see, it's a nice speed up. Um, yeah, so any questions about this? So I noticed there's an assets directory, oh sorry, an assets directory and then also models, views, and apps. So assets are like style sheets in the front? Assets or? are like images, oh, like images. PDF files or index, you know, if you have an index like HTML file or something like that, that's where that stuff would go. And I think actually the default skeleton has, uh, yeah, it has an index that you smell file there. Um, yeah, and if you like go to vendor, um, it has you know backbone, jQuery, and so forth. And you can drop other things in there, and they're immediately added to the compiled version and so forth. So it's really useful. Um, saves a lot of work kind of setting up this stuff by hand, um, and I've been using it for about eight months now. It's a really mm -hmm. solid um, way of doing that sort of thing. Oh, another nifty thing, you do brunch, build, pass in the dash M, and it'll <coughs> minify it for you. So that's great for production. Yeah, so a few other things I wanted to mention. Uh, where am I? Uh, so like, like I said, it, it comes with a default, it comes with like a default skeleton for kind of a default structure for how your app can be set up. But there's a few other ones here that you can look at. Um, one particularly one interesting one is called uh, Brunch with Chaplin. And Chaplin is kind of a interesting effort um, a number of people working on to kind of create the, the, a good starter skeleton people building complex single page apps around Backbone. Uh, so a lot of interesting ideas in here and they're actually, the reading is really good if you want to get some ideas. Um, yeah, and so a few other points I want to make about Brunch that um, it is kind of helpful in building different applications. Uh, Brunch, you, you write all your different classes in different files and then automatically kind of puts a common JS wrapper around your files. Um, so the nice thing about that is it makes it really easy to reuse, to kind of pull out different pieces of your code and reuse it across different applications. So I, I've started doing this, kind of like pulling out interesting things from different apps. Um, so I have like these GitHub repositories where I just have some like different helper classes that I've built. Um, and then this is kind of nice, like it's easy to build kind of UI widgets um, as views, and then these views are then reusable across different projects. So for example, um, this is one app I'm building. Um, for example, you know, having an expanding text area is a very nice handy feature, but it's kind of a pain to set up, speaking from experience. But one, you know, I did it once, and I stuck it into a view, and I have all the JS code and all the CSS that's needed um, right there, and then I can just include it in any other project I'm doing. So I have it here, but also like another project I'm building, um, you know, this exact same code, and I reused it across the different things for different settings. So it it's, makes it trivial to do stuff like that. Um, yeah, so 
the branch website is quite complete. There's lots of documentation. Um, there's quite a few sample applications. There's a, a Twitter clone of sorts that you can uh, you can look at the code of. This is all built in branch. And then there's like a to do app, um, like the backbone to do app example app has been ported to branch. Um, kind of get an idea of how things can work. And yeah, and so there's a few other. Um, kind of command line automation tools for Backbone. One particular one that's got a lot of attention recently is Brent. So there's some good stuff here as well. You might want to check it out. But yeah, that's my, uh, my presentation. Any questions? Yeah. I was wondering, do you um, deploy those as uh, NPM model modules? They, uh, like your text view thing, or how do you share the custom code? The, the, the text expander. Oh, the text expander? The, did you make it an NPM module or do you it's, like make it a GitHub sure. module or just copy or paste, copy and paste it? Yeah, you basically just copy. Like, okay. th this is what it is. There's there's a template. You know, this is the basic template using eco. Um, Expanding JS is the library which somebody else wrote, um, which does most of the artwork actually. And then there's the view file here, which sets things up. And then uh, SAS code for the CSS. So you basically just copy it into your. Yeah, so I pulled in there and copied around and so forth. And yeah, that works. It's pretty easy. So far. Yeah. Is it possible to put it somehow on top of Rails, let's say, and set up pipeline so you just get all those you know, ways but um, some kind of other Very possibly. I don't use Rails, so mm -hmm. I have not investigated that. But um, you can set the the build directory where it's putting yeah, the so biocode. Can, can we change, let's say, those folders, like structure of those generated folders? Yeah, yeah. You, yeah. You, you can create your own skeleton that has whatever structure you want. Or you can just delete whatever it generates and make your own thing. Uh, yeah. So, kind of on the same question he's asking, how do you package this with some backend system like Rails? I mean, you can't just easily just serve this to the cloud and have your data persist. So, how do you hook it up with the backend? You said it's backend agnostic, right? Yeah. Um, <coughs> like, if you look at the config file, um, you just set you set the paths directory where it builds wherever you want. So you can put your like you put your source wherever you I don't really know how Rails works. But you put your source wherever Rails once you put source and then you just have it built somewhere where the the, the JS should go. Can someone who uses Rails help me out here? Like, does it make sense? No, so you're making it make sense. Okay, good. So wherever you have your static assets I assume um, yeah. you build you set the path. Yeah, you just you just treat the JS that branch outputs as the JS for your Rails apps as like a static thing, and then if you're running your CSS through here, you can do the same thing, or you can use a separate CSS build system. I think something like the first first project structure, like the iPhone app, iPhone app kind of fits like the Rails Rails project makes sense in this case also. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if you look at like the build directory or the, the public directory, I mean, it just it takes your assets folder and sticks it in here, and then it compiles your JavaScript into those an app.js and vendor.js, and then you know style sheets, the same thing. So in all like the structure of this output and where its output is completely configurable, so you can kind of bend it to your will pretty easily. And you also mentioned that it's very easy to add UI widgets. Um, why is it easy? Like, could you show us an example of where you add a widget? Like, for instance, the expanding text box? Yeah. Um, well, it's easy in the sense that you can like, um, just because it's, it's modular, because it's using, because it's separating the files out into separate, or, or it's separate. You can separate your code into separate folders and files. It's easy to drop in code 
and then refer to it from other places. So for example, what I, what I normally do is I have a widgets directory within my app, and then so I just clone my, my, my repository of UI widgets right here. And then if I want to refer to one, if I want to refer to one, I just I just require widgets. You know, uh, I just require widgets expanding text area, to expanding text, and then I have that view object that I can do whatever I want with. Um, so, yeah. <clears throat> so it's not really inherent to French, it's just because French makes it easier to have modular code you can do. Modular code things. That makes sense. Cool. Other questions? Yeah. I actually need help on this also because uh, so you're said you're assuming this widget belongs in one file and it sort of sits independently. But a lot of people when they build up these widgets sort of build off of a box and then decorators they have this whole huge inheritance thing. Uh -huh. Then I hear people using these require type packages to figure out what you need when you go to the expanding box. I, I don't have a clue how to solve that, so maybe somebody else has some ideas there. So you're asking? Right, right now what you're saying is everything I need to make my expanding text area is sitting in that one file, right? Um, in that one directory. Um, one there's, directory. I mean, there's a readme here which explains how to set it up. Assuming you, know, you, need, you need to copy things around a bit, so it's not like completely automated. But okay, so this gonna, isn't like you're going to copy the whole the whole widget thing over to your next project, then, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This this is kind of my own library that I've okay. I'm building up to reuse across multiple projects. The simple one I yeah. I think I'll up that if you're familiar with um, like Rails prior to Rails three, we use Yeah, if I want to be like really ambitious, I could write a branch plugin which would install this automatically or something like that. Yeah, couldn't you just uh, use NPM for that? Or, um, yeah, you probably could use just, yeah, NPM. Well, maybe, yeah. I don't know. Maybe. There's some way of automating it. I don't know what that is. Um, what is NPM? Oh, NPM. Yeah. Um, yeah. Other questions? Are you the creator and, and the sole developer of this, or is there a community behind this? No, I, I contributed bug reports. That's my main contribution <laughs> so far. Um, oh, so it has a community. Oh yeah, it's, it's got like a thousand followers or so on GitHub, and there's one main guy who's doing most of the coding right now, and he has very good taste. Um, <laughs> it work. It um, and so he, this Paul Miller guy, he's like from Russia or something like that, but he seems like a really nice guy, and he's really competent, and so, um, yeah, so, but there's a good community, there's quite a few people using it. Cool. All right, thanks, Kyle. Thank you so much.